So, we are looking into the design uh, and selecting of a suitable insulator. So, for uh, 220 kV uh, uh, system, so as mentioned uh, we have the following uh, parameters which we have uh, uh, got the leakage distance being 170 inches, the switching surge or a switching impulse voltage uh, will be 850 kV and the lightning impulse uh, with stand value will be uh, 1056 kV. These are all for the dry conditions uh, that is for the normal uh, conditions in the insulator strings are in the outdoor environment that is without considering the rain, fog or pollution conditions. In case of pollution, rain or fog, the wet flash over voltages or the wet switching surge lightning impulse and uh, the values gets changed. So, that we will be discussing. So, this whatever approximate values which we have are shown here for 220. Similarly, for 66 kV, the table shows you in case uh, 66 kV the maximum uh, system voltage will be 69 kV and the line to ground will be around 41.8 and uh, line to ground voltage uh, into root 2 will be 59.1. And here again for uh, 69 uh, kV, uh, if you uh, take the insulator strings are operating at different uh, environments, we see uh, leakage distance being at 41.8 and uh, switching surge voltages 125 kV and lightning surge voltages being at 359 kV. So, these are the two uh, different uh, uh, values for uh, different voltage levels. Uh, similarly, for uh, higher the voltages 400 kV, 765 and uh, higher voltages, a similar uh, uh, pattern will be followed with other considerations for the design aspect. So, just uh, looking into the uh, approximate uh, values, the approximate uh, values which uh, we have obtained uh, for both the voltage levels are shown here the 66 and 220 kV, the leakage distance being 41.6 in case of 66 kV and 220 kV it is 170. Switching surge voltages being 125 kV in case of 66 and uh, 850 and lightning impulses 359 and 1056. As I mentioned uh, these values are for dry conditions. So, now the selection uh, whatever uh, we have uh, made or uh, we have seen uh, are uh, from the data for the 66 kV. You know the leakage distance uh, when you look the required is 42 inches. So, the available from the manufacturer is 46 inches. So, which is higher uh, than the required uh, which we have uh, tried to estimate. Similarly, uh, in case of uh, impulse uh, voltage levels uh, we have uh, 125 kV and the available is 240 kV uh, for uh, wet switching surge and impulse withstand voltages the required is 359 as per our calculations the available is 374 uh, kV. So, these voltage uh, values uh, by the manufacturers which are available are higher than the values which have been uh, estimated. So, similarly for uh, mechanical and electrical uh, strengths. Uh, the mechanical strength requirement is uh, 1200 uh, 12000 uh, pounds whereas the available uh, mechanical strength with the insulator uh, from the manufacturer is 15000 uh, pounds so various uh, contaminated environments i was mentioning you in case of uh, wet or uh, polluted conditions so polluted conditions are again uh, uh, divided into uh, various zones like uh, light medium heavy, very heavy, uh, very light and so on. So, these uh, areas where the insulator strings are to be used are being uh, uh, taken care particularly depending upon the area of the polluted uh, zones. So, for this uh, term known as ESDD, ESDD is equivalent salt deposit density. This is uh, given in milligrams per uh, uh, centimeter square. This equivalent salt deposit density uh, depending upon the site severity, I was telling the location where the insulator strings are to be connected or the towers which are to be erected depends upon the leakage distance which is to be considered. That is I is the suspension string, I was mentioning you for a configuration of suspension string, V being the V type of string. So, here it will be inches per kV uh, the values for line to ground voltages. So, you can see that ESDD 
uh, is nothing but the equivalent salt deposit density on the surface of the insulator, how it is calculated. So, normally the insulator uh, is uh, allowed to be in the uh, field for a certain period of time uh, based on the site severity whether uh, the area is light, moderate or heavy polluted zone. The uh, insulator after uh, uh, period of time is taken out and uh, the ceramic or a poly, uh, porcelain uh, portion except the cap and pin the contents or contaminants which are spread on the only insulating surface are removed carefully with a known quantity of uh, distilled water and uh, the conductivity is measured and this is how uh, we see uh, the equivalent salt uh, deposit density on the surface of insulators. So, based on this uh, data we can uh, uh, say that the line uh, which is being uh, erected uh, comes under pollution of uh, light, medium or heavy uh, polluted zones. So, this is the application there is application guide uh, particularly how to be used during the insulation design. Uh, uh, there are standard and also the international uh, bodies which uh, uh, have the data for this. Similarly, uh, important IEC uh, International Electrotechnical Commission uh, standard 60815 uh, which completely gives about the information on the polluted conditions, uh, the values uh, which are to be used for the simulation in the laboratory uh, for a particular uh, uh, KV uh, voltage level is described in standard 60815 for various uh, type of insulators depending upon the creepage length of the insulator, how uh, the insulator can perform in this conditions. So, the criteria has been given and various values as per the standard uh, spec uh, specified uh, uh, values of ESDD that is equivalent salt deposit density are to be used uh, in case. Uh, in the laboratory verification or laboratory testing of this insulator for uh, various uh, types of uh, insulators to be uh, tested. So, again the recommended uh, leakage distance various uh, groups uh, this includes the IEEE international uh, study groups uh, and IEC is the electrical uh, international electrotechnical commission apart from there are several other uh, standard bodies which uh, converge and uh, they look into these uh, requirements uh, for various uh, leakage distance and they have recommended. So, these are the curves which uh, show for uh, the recommendation of the leakage uh, distances in inch per kV that is the line to ground versus the equivalent salt deposit density that is in milligrams per uh, centimeter square the values uh, have been defined for various pollution uh, zones. So, both for uh, ceramic uh, glass and uh, uh, polymeric uh, uh, materials which have to be used for the laboratory evaluation uh, for the verification of performance of uh, insulators. Then again uh, um, this graph shows the improved contamination uh, performance uh, mainly gives about the flash ore uh, versus the equivalent uh, salt deposit density, uh, the flash ore voltage across the equivalent salt deposit density the curves very clearly give you the idea uh, which are been uh, used for porcelain then uh, um, EPDM uh, and polymer insulator there is a new SRA silicon uh, rubber insulator aged silicon rubber insulator uh, ethylene poly dye monomer is the EPDM uh, material which is being used for uh, uh, the uh, insulation purpose. So, this uh, gives you the um, improved the contamination performance uh, the measure of equivalent salts uh, deposit density how it is being used in the field. Uh, with the help of the pollution mo monitors using a dummy insulators in service, uh, removing uh, in service insulators, uh, evaluation of the equivalent salt deposit density and the selecting of the appropriate uh, leakage distances to be used in that areas. So, very important uh, uh, graph which gives you the idea uh, for the improved contamination performance. So, the contamination or the pollution performance of an insulator uh, is a very uh, important issue when you go for extra high voltage and ultra high voltage uh, transmission I was mentioning. Uh, now, uh, for last 100 years we were using uh, the polymer porcelain or uh, the ceramic insulators uh, 
and the glass insulators. Polymer insulators as I was mentioning it was it is of the uh, recent origin and uh, particularly they are organic in nature. So, polymer insulators presently what we have seen offer better contamination flash over performance than porcelain yes, uh, but again the power performance uh, has to be judged over a period of time. These insulators being of recent origin uh, the field data uh, 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 available uh, for the longer uh, performance a uh, longer uh, time performance is uh, not yet available. So, uh, we have to um, see the performance over a period of time and then uh, uh, conclude that uh, polymer insulator can offer better performance for a very long period of time. Yes, short term performance they are performing good and uh, giving the better contamination flash or performance in comparison to the porcelain or glass type of uh, insulators. The polymer insulators or silicon rubber or a composite insulator have smaller core that is a fiberglass core and weather shed diameter there is a petticoat uh, which uh, the uh, molded on the fiberglass rod. This can increase the leakage current uh, density. So, it is a important uh, uh, comparison compared to the uh, porcelain looks uh, aesthetically much better than the earlier porcelain or a glass type of insulators. Uh, higher leakage current density uh, what we were uh, looking here uh, means uh, more homic heating. Again more homic heating helps to dry the contaminated layer and reduce the leakage current. So, this is uh, one of the very important uh, aspect uh, when using in for uh, uh, polymer type of insulator where hydrophobicity the property of the surface uh, of the polymer insulator try to repel the water and sees that uh, it has better uh, um, uh, leakage current uh, density and uh, sees that the contamination layer and the reducing of the leakage current which helps uh, in the better performance of uh, the flash or uh, particularly in pollution or a contaminated areas. In addition, uh, the polymer insulators uh, hydrophobicity helps to minimize the filming. Hydrophobicity is uh, property of the surface of the material where it tries to ripple the water droplets or the polluted uh, droplets which are being on the surface particularly the water droplets and sees that the filming formation on the surface is uh, reduced and uh, where uh, the contaminants or the pollutants goes on accumulating gets reduced that is one more advantage uh, with the polymer uh, type of insulator. So, the contamination performance of a composite or a polymer or a silicon rubber insulator exceeds that of uh, their porcelain or a glass uh, counterparts which are being used for a long period of uh, time this is an important uh, point to be uh, noted. The next being the contamination flash or performance. Um, whether it exceeds uh, that of the EPDM units uh, again uh, depending upon the number of years the uh, insulator is in service in comparison to the electri uh, ethylene propylene dye monomer uh, type of units which were uh, the earlier uh, version of the silicon rubber insulators uh, presently being used. The presently I mentioned that uh, being used uh, are of a third generation. So, EPDM were earlier used uh, how much uh, is better uh, the time comparison is very important. Uh, this has to be uh, properly uh, uh, verified in the laboratory from the field insulators and uh, can be judge the performance of uh, the silicon uh, with the information uh, where the flash or performance could be better in comparison to the earlier EPDM uh, units. Uh, Next uh, the grading rings as I was mentioning corona control rings, grading rings, arcing horns these are all uh, the similar uh, um, names or are the same uh, uh, hardware which are being used for uh, uh, proper grading that is the voltage distribution in case of uh, various insulator rings. So, these grading rings corona control rings are, are uh, uh, very important uh, they simulate a larger uh, or more spherical object in case as the voltage level goes up the corona control rings of a spherical nature or a rectangular type uh, which are being used in the long transmission uh, insulators, long transmission lines and high voltage and extra high voltage and ultra high voltage transmission uh, for insulator strings. These uh, help in reducing the gradients particularly associated with the shielded object. So, the insulator string 
is having a hardware as I mentioned the uh, yoke plate along with several accessories which are connected to the tower side and also to the line side. Uh, so, these uh, have to be equally uh, reduced so that the insulator never sees stress in a particular uh, region. So, the equal uniform distribution of voltage is to be maintained and uh, the higher gradients have to be reduced. For this the grading rings or the corona control rings are employed for the transmission uh, uh, line insulator strings. So, reduction uh, in gradings helps to minimize the RIV and TVI. RIV is a radio interference voltage and uh, TVI is the television voltage interference. So, we will be discussing about the radio interference voltage and TVI uh, in future uh, when we come to the importance of these uh, parameters. So, the gradients which uh, in case if it is not reduced can lead to uh, discharges on from the particularly hardware and corona control or uh, grading rings and these discharges uh, which are of impulsive in nature will communicate uh, through the uh, conductors uh, and uh, to the neighboring uh, uh, areas where uh, radio sites or a television uh, could be affected because these are high impulse uh, impulse in nature and uh, operate at that voltage levels. So, radio interference voltage uh, measurements which are carried in the laboratory see that uh, the gradients are quite uh, lower and the discharges which are being from the uh, hardware and grading rings do not interfere in radio telecommunication, radio interference, uh, uh, radio uh, circuitry or the television interferences causing uh, uh, causing interference to the uh, radio and television sets. So, uh, mentioning about the porcelain or glass, these are inorganic and uh, break down very slowly uh, which are being used for last 100 years or so. Uh, mechanically they are uh, good and performance it has been judged over a period of time. Now, the recent non ceramic insulators are polymer, silicon rubber or composite uh, insulators are more susceptible to seasoning due to corona. So, corona is again a phenomena which happens near the hardware corona control rings. Uh, particularly in the vicinity, vicinity of uh, high voltage uh, where the discharges or the air breakdown takes place and uh, the corona may be uh, initially audible then the visible discharges uh, coming out from the hardware or a corona control uh, rings uh, or a grading rings continuously impinge uh, on the surface of the particularly non ceramic insulator or polymer insulators over a period of time uh, which uh, in the intensity is more may cause the insulator surface uh, to lose its hydrophobicity and uh, likely uh, over a period uh, can reduce the surface uh, properties, insulating properties. This how it happens uh, due to the corona, we will be also discussing about the effect of corona on the polymer insulators and how it could affect the uh, insulation uh, in, uh, in future. So, you Next the UV ultraviolet, again these are short wavelength range, this may attack the polymer bonds on the silicon rubber or a polymer insulators. See this ultraviolet again may be from the natural sun during the daytime or due to the corona, the effect of corona also causes the ultraviolet uh, radiations which may impinge on the surface and attack the polymer bonds uh, making the surface of the insulator uh, less hydrophobic and where uh, the surface um, may degrade over a period of time and uh, the insulation level could be reduced. So, the most short wavelength ultraviolet is filtered by the environment, but the in, uh, ultraviolets which is coming from the corona uh, is uh, not filtered and it may damage the surface. So, ultraviolet due to corona is not filtered. This ultraviolet uh, due to corona is from the uh, hardware, corona control rings or grading rings. So, non ceramic insulators have a different uh, corona control rings which are designed not like the porcelain or a glass type of insulator. So, here the uh, design of the grading rings or the corona control rings uh, depends on uh, how the hardware end fittings of the 
uh, non ceramic uh, insulators is designed and for the particular voltage level. So, due to corona cutting what we call and also water droplet corona which this water droplet corona may happen because of the rain droplets which settle on the surface of a polymer insulator. So, these are likely to develop uh, small discharges and later on corona discharges which slowly degrade the surface on the insulator and uh, the hydrophobicity effect could be uh, uh, over a period of time it may lose the hydrophobicity characteristics later on the degradation of the insulator could happen. So, the non ceramic insulators may require the application of the corona control or a grading rings particularly to grade the field on the polymer material on the weather shed housing. So, this is very important in case proper design of corona control rings. Uh, for the non ceramic or a polymer insulator is not done, uh, the material uh, could uh, the weathering on the particularly on the weather sheds, uh, the petticoats or the weather shed of the material could lose the hydrophobicity over a period of time. So, these corona rings must be or uh, grading rings must be properly positioned. The positioning of the corona control rings is equally important with the design. So, not only the design plays a role, the positioning of the corona control ring alignment in the uh, string uh, is very important. Uh, so, that the end fitting on which they are mounted has to be properly um, uh, uh, mounted, else there could be a shift in the position and this may lead to higher corona discharges um, which may damage the surface of the polymer sheds. So, the orientation positioning is to provide grading to the polymer uh, material or a polymer insulator string. As a general rule, uh, the corona control rings uh, or uh, uh, the grading ring should be over the polymer uh, brackets uh, which should be on the hardware. So, hard these brackets or accessories are provided on the insulator uh, metal end fittings which are connected to the tower. So, they should be properly positioned, properly mounted and properly oriented with the help of bra brackets uh, on the hardware that is uh, on the yoke plate or the connecting hardware to the tower and to the conductor side. So, what is the service experience uh, which has been uh, observed over a period of time? So, we will uh, discuss about for both the ceramic and the polymer insulators uh, which have served uh, the transmission system for a period of time. What are the likely uh, problems or issues which could happen in case of a polymer insulator, a porcelain insulator or a glass insulator. We will be discussing uh, the particular issues in the field related failures and so on. Uh, the ceramic or a porcelain uh, I was mentioning they are more than 100 years old, initially started off uh, uh, as a telegraphic uh, insulators were employed for the transmission very early stages and presently the porcelain or ceramic insulators are used for all voltages from a very low voltage to the uh, ultra high voltage range up to 800 kV or even for the 1200 kV experimental lines the polymer porcelain insulators are being used for the line insulation. These provide uh, porcelain insulators provide greater flexibility because they have a cap and a pin arrangement. This is the cap, this is the pin of the insulator, this is the porcelain shell and these are the petticoats the are sheds what we call. So, the cap and pin are connected or fixed to the porcelain shell with the help of a Portland cement and properly the zinc coating is carried out to see the corrosion never happens in the field. So, a schematic of the design of a porcelain uh, suspension insulator is also shown here where the porcelain shell is this one and the cap whatever the cap which you see is the malleable or a ductile iron uh, material uh, which is fixed on the uh, uh, as a cap of the insulator. And we have a pin, pin is again uh, a malleable and forged iron pin, this is a iron both are iron cap and uh, uh, pin of the insulator. These are fixed with the help of a Portland a cement with the bituminous coating here. So, you have initially uh, a sand band particularly here to fix the pin and also to fix the cap a sand band is coated uh, fixed to the surface of the por porcelain uh, disc. Later on with the help of the Portland cement uh, both the 
pin and the cap of the insulator are fixed uh, leaving a small cushioning with uh, here to the insulator. So, this is how the ceramic insulator uh, desi is designed uh, for the transmission uh, system. So, this uh, as uh, mentioning uh, used for last 100 years and uh, they are used for all voltages uh, for any type of uh, line insulation and they provide greater flexibility because of this cap and pin arrangement and they are strong in compression particularly because of the compressive loads because of the wind variation because of uh, in the tension uh, they are very good at compression that is one of the advantages of using a ceramic insulators uh, they can take uh, better compressive load in comparison to other insulates. So, they are available in various shapes again the shape it depends on where the area this insulator is being used either it is uh, for a normal conditions that is a clear conditions or a polluted zones or the desert areas. So, depending upon the areas uh, the petticoats can be designed and the shapes can be made available. So, this is very simple to make it and a complicated sometimes because you require a special uh, petticoat uh, for a particular area in case there is a fog. So, the anti fog type of insulation has to be done and it has to be carried out with a high degree of uh, standardization uh, including the material aspect and the process. So, uh, this is how the porcelain uh, or a ceramic insul insulators uh, are being serving the transmission uh, utilities. So, what is the experience uh, with uh, ceramic? electrically over a period of time that is more than 100 years they have said uh, electrically they are fairly stable with time over a period of time. Mechanically they are subject to deterioration with time mechanically they could happen uh, is uh, there may be a cement uh, issues here the corrosion on the pin there could be a problem with the cap. So, this is uh, because of the mechanical load uh, because of the environmental uh, factors the corrosion of the pin could happen and uh, in some of the cases where uh, the cap and pin gets detached from the insulator it leaves uh, the line uh, uh, detached to the tower.